problem 13.9. Uh, so we modify the critical region in the section 5 so that they can be used to, to test the now hypothesis H uh, lambda equals lambda 0 versus uh, one any one of these three. Sorry, this last one should be not equal to any one of these three alternative hypotheses. So on the basis of n random samples here, lambda is a parameter of the Poisson distribution. Okay, so now we have uh, the x1 through xn that are following the Poisson distribution. And uh, uh, a very critical thing here is that uh, since they are following the Poisson distribution, remember what that meaning, meaning is. The meaning is that in a unit time, in a unit time, uh, so if for each one of this guy, it is an observation of the rare events, the number of rare events uh, in a unit time. And the expectation of them will be lambda. Okay? So this is actually just an observation of n times in the, over a unit time window to see how many events comes in. So uh, it is the same as, say, you observe this. Okay, I will say in this way. So it's, that's the t. That's the on the time t. So in the unit time, say e one, then we have we could observe some events right at different time points. We have some events. So that is the x one, for example. Then uh, at the cutoff time point one, we can observe one more time. And then here we'll see a number of rare events, and that can be that will be our x two. So we can interpret this x one through x n in this way. So eventually, then we have the time n. The total, the sum of those xi's will be eventually the number of rare events happened during the time 0 to n. So the n times the unit of time. Okay, so that is why the sum of them actually follows the Poisson distribution with n lambda as the parameter. Because n lambda will be the expected number of rare events happening during the time window 0 to n. Okay, so that is a, a property uh, from we learn from the Poisson distribution. Now, so now this sum is following the Poisson distribution. Then when we set up a critical region, uh, then we need to make sure that the critical region gives us a particular size, right? So what will be that critical region? The critical region is depending on what we are interested in. For example, if we are interested in this on our hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. That means if the, lamb, the sum of the lambda is too large, sorry, if sum of the xi is too large, that means we will reject this. We reject this null hypothesis and accept this alternative hypothesis. Right? That is the case when we are going to set up our critical region. The key is that we need to, the key problem right now is to, to figure out this critical region or to figure out this k, the cutoff point of the critical region and the, to separate the critical region and the acceptance region such that the probability of this thing here is equal to alpha, the uh, prescribed uh, significance level. Okay, so we need to make sure that this is equal to alpha. But since we re recognize that this S is following the Poisson distribution with n lambda as a parameter, so the probability, probability of this thing will be very straightforward. Just to, for every fixed k, the probability of this is greater than equal to k, it's just the probability of the S greater than equal to k, right? It's just a plug in the PD, PMF for the Poisson distribution with n lambda as a parameter. So that is the probability uh, for this S equals to uh, equal to j, right? And the j could be any number greater than or equal to k. So that would be this thing. The key right now is to make sure that if you have a alpha, then you should choose this k so that this probability here or the sum here is equal to alpha. Usually that's uh, not may not be easy or may not be possible. The things this k is not continuous, right? It's jumping. It's jumping as one, two, three, four, five. So uh, you know that when k is getting larger and larger, this value is getting smaller and smaller, right? So we definitely want to choose the um, I would say the smallest value of k. Because you, if you, you can already choose this k super large, then this one will be anyway small. So we want to choose the smallest k, so that this is still the probability here, which is this guy, is still less than equal to alpha. Okay, choose the smallest uh, little k, so that this one is less than equal to alpha. And uh, the rest uh, is just, uh, you know, to figure out this value, uh, you need some uh, numerical computations, uh, either based on 
I would say uh, you know this lambda, right? Uh, so uh, to make sure that this is less than or equal to alpha, you just need to choose this. So I should say the lambda zero here. Should say lambda zero here. So just choose that case such that this is less than or equal to alpha. So in that case, you will know the lambda zero, and you know the n, and uh, you just compute this value for say um, this such that this is less than equal to alpha, or eventually it's the equivalent to saying that j from 0 to k, and the same n lambda 0, j e to negative n lambda 0, divided by j factorial, should be greater than equal to 1 minus alpha. Okay. You just choose the smallest k, so that this sum is greater than 1 minus alpha. Remember that you know everything here. For every j, you know the value here, because you know the lambda 0, you know the n. Okay, so that is how we set up, how we find the critical region. Okay, and eventually the critical region will be just that. Once you find this k here, such that this smallest k such that this, this uh, inequality holds, then your critical region is just that to be the sum of this uh, random samples so is greater than or equal to this k. Okay, that will be the critical region of size alpha. Okay, similarly you can do this for the other two. So for example, you are interested in this, then you know that when the sum of this XS is too small, then you will reject H0. So in that case, you're going to see that, okay, the probability that S is less than equal to K, S is the sum of this XS. If this is less than uh, equal to K, uh, which is this property, you want this to find the largest K so that this sum is less than equal to alpha. Okay, and uh, you can do it similarly for the uh, 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 for the two-sided test, where the alternative hypothesis is lambda not equal to lambda zero. So in that case, you need to find the two critical values, k1 and k2, so that uh, the sum is less than equal to k1, and uh, the sum of x is less than, greater than k2, the, both of the properties should be less than equal to half of the alpha. Okay, And then uh, finding, once you found this uh, k1, k2, you will be able to construct the critical region, which is just uh, that your sum is too small, less than equal to k1, or it's too large, less greater than equal to k2, then you're going to reject h naught. 